right, getting to the good stuff, your algebra, I love it. I love this, solving one and two step equations because there's nothing to interpret, you're just solving. It's, to me, how my brain works, um, the easiest kind of math. So here we go, solving one step equations. A one step equation is when you only have to perform one operation to isolate a variable. In other words, to solve for x or whatever variable you're using, you only have to do one thing and then you get the variable by itself, that's it. So first we're gonna do it with adding and subtracting and then I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna do it by multiplying and dividing. So properties of equality are some properties that you need to know for your next assessment coming up um, for chapter two, not coming up, but when we finish the chapter. Addition property of equality just says that whatever I add on one side of an equal sign, I have to add the same thing on the other side to keep both sides equal, right? Just like you guys heard in middle school when you have the two sides of a scale, like um, when you're weighing fruit at you know Publix or whatever, one of those kind of scales. And let's say both sides are equal, you know, whatever, whatever weight they are, both sides of the scale are equal. Well, if you add five pounds, or if you add, if you're getting fruit and you add an orange to one side, they're not gonna be equal anymore, right? But if you add the same exact weight or the same exact thing, to the other side as well, then they are still gonna be equal, right? That's how it works. So that's the addition property of equality. Same thing with subtraction. Any property of equality is a rule that we use to keep both sides of an equation equal. They start off equal, we wanna keep them equal. So even if I change the way one side looks, I have to do the same exact thing on the other side of the equal sign to change the way it looks as well to keep both sides equal. Okay, so we're either gonna add or subtract and we're gonna jump right into it. If you guys need some examples, there's a couple here. Um, solve m minus 32 equals 18. To get m by itself, I need to get rid of minus 32. So I need to add 32. And if I'm adding 32 over here, I have to add 32 over here, right? So that's what they did, they added 32 here and they added 32 here and then the next step they just simplified and they got m equals 50. So we could go back and double check ourselves and say well is 50 minus 32 equal to 18? Yes it is so that works out. Okay same thing over here this is a subtraction problem 22 plus p equals negative 12. We are trying to get p by itself so right now p is being added with 22. We want to get rid of the positive 22 so we're going to subtract 22 and since I subtracted from this side I have to subtract from this side right. So this is the subtraction property of equality and then we just simplify it. 22 minus 22 they cancel each other out and I'm left with p equals negative 22, uh, negative 12 minus 22 is negative 34. If I went back up here and I said 22 plus negative 34, I would get negative 12. That would be the correct answer. So you always wanna double check your answers, okay? So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna try and stick to this one column because it has a little bit of everything. I won't like take up your time going through every single problem. All right, so we have H minus three equals negative two. To get H all alone, I have to add three. And whatever I do on one side of my equal sign, I have to do the same thing on the other side. And then I go ahead and do it, right? So these cancel and I'm left with H, bring down my equal sign, negative two plus three is positive one. Do you guys have a visual when you add and subtract negative and positive numbers? I don't know what my deal is, but I always think of water, right? Or, or like ground level, so ground level zero. So if I'm at negative two, that means I'm two units or two feet or whatever, two below ground. And then if I go up three, I go up those two that I was down. So now I'm at ground level and one more. So now I'm at positive one, negative two plus three is positive one. That's how my brain works. There's so much going on inside this head. You have no idea. I sound like a crazy person half the time. All right, number four, 20 equals y minus eight. I'm trying to get y alone, so I need to get rid of minus eight. So to cancel out minus eight, to just make it zero, I need to add eight. And since I'm adding eight over here, I need to add eight over here. So these two numbers cancel each other out, they're just zero. Bring down my y, 20 plus eight is 28. And 
note to self, anytime you have an answer in algebra, you do always want to write it so that the variable is first. It just keeps everything clean and consistent. It's not wrong if you left it this way, it's just kind of unfinished. So we were looking for y, so we're gonna write y first, y equals 28. Um, number seven, y minus 18 equals negative 17. So we need to add 18 here to get, why did I say y? I don't know, it's an h. h minus 18 equals negative 17. I'm adding 18 here, so I need to add 18 over here. These cancel each other out, so I'm left with h equals, if I'm down underground, negative 17, and I come up 18, I end up one foot or unit or whatever above ground. I need to write this over here, it's gonna bother me. There we go. All right, um, and then number 10, b minus 40 equals negative 40. So to get b alone, I need to cancel out negative 40. How do I make negative 40 into zero? Just add 40. Whatever's being done to B that I want to get rid of, I have to do the opposite operation. So if it's subtracting, I need to add. If it's multiplying, I need to divide. If it's dividing, I need to multiply. Whatever it is, I have to do the opposite and it cancels it out. And since I added 40 here, I have to do the same thing over here. Now don't freak out here, it is okay. Look, these cancel out and I'm left with B equals, oh, and these cancel out too, is that okay? Absolutely, the answer is just zero. 0 minus 40 equals negative 40. If you're at ground level and you go down 40 feet, how far down are you? Negative 40 feet, right? Makes sense. So sometimes your answer can be 0. That's okay. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It's okay if it cancels out. Number 13, x plus 12 equals 6. I want to get x alone, so I need to get rid of positive 12. So I'm going to subtract it. And since I subtracted 12 on the left side of my equation, i got to do the same thing on the right. These cancel. I'm left with x plus 0 equals 6 minus 12 is negative 6. Does it make sense that negative 6 plus 12 is positive 6? Yeah, if I start 6 feet below ground and I go up 12 feet, well, the first 6 feet of that is going to be just to get to ground level, right? And then I go up another 6, that totals 12, and I'm 6 feet above, or 6 whatever above ground. Um, so this is x equals negative 6. 16. Ooh, bell. Love it every time. Every time. Okay, uh, 16. x plus negative 9 equals 7. Now, before we get into like, well, wait, it's a negative. Do I subtract? Do I add? Blah, blah. Simplify this first, please. k minus 9 equals 7. Right? We have a double sign here. Whenever you have a plus and a minus together, it's too much. It's too many signs. So you got to take both of them away and replace them with one, right? So if they're both different, it's a minus sign we're replacing them with. Okay, so this equation is just k minus 9 equals 7. And to get k by itself, I need to add 9 here. So I need to add 9 here. These go away. I'm going to run out of room. 7 plus 9 is 16, so I'm going to have k equals 16. Two more. Uh, 19 plus h equals negative 4. I need to get h alone. This is a positive 19. How do I get rid of a positive 19? How do I make it 0? I just subtract 19. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, the equal sign. These sides cancel. I'm left with h equals negative 4 minus 19. If I'm 4 feet underground and I go down 19 more feet, where do I end up? Negative 23 feet underground, right? telling you guys that whole ground level zero up and down thing that helps me so much all right 22 b plus 80 equals negative 80 i need to get rid of plus 80 so i need to subtract and since i'm subtracting on the left i need to subtract the same thing on the right this becomes zero so i bring down my b bring down my equal sign negative 80 minus 80 if you're down 180 oh, sorry if you're down 80 feet and then you go down 80 more, you end up at negative 160. And I just say feet in my head, it doesn't have to be feet. Okay, there's more examples too. I'm not gonna go through all of them just for time, but they're all the same thing. So if you get the basic idea, you are good to go. We're doing the exact same thing with multiplication and division. Same exact idea. So multiplication property of equality says that if A and B are equal, 
uh, then if you multiply A by C, you have to multiply B by the same thing, right? That's all it's saying. Division, same thing. If A and B are equal, then if I divide A by something, I have to divide B by the same thing to keep it equal. Think about like if you have little brothers and sisters or big brothers and sisters. I know I have like two, I have three kids, so two of them, the older two, and they're little, they're always fighting over stuff, right? So if I give one something, I have to give the other one the exact same thing because I gotta keep everything equal. It's a pain in the butt. No, I'm just kidding, I love my children. Um, so here we have to keep everything the same. We have to do the same thing on both sides. There's a couple examples. We're just gonna jump right into this, hopefully by me doing these at all. Help, I'm gonna zoom in a little. You guys can see that. Okay, um, h divided by three equals negative two. Since I'm dividing by three, to undo that, to get rid of divided by three, I do the opposite, which is multiplying by three. And the other side was negative two. Since I multiplied this side by three, I have to multiply this side by three. So over here, these threes cancel, right? When you multiply, h times three divided by three is just h. These operations cancel each other out. So I have h equals negative two times three is negative six. Okay, number four, five equals y divided by 12. If I wanna know what y is, I have to get rid of divided by 12. So I do the opposite and multiply by 12. So I gotta multiply this side by 12, right? These 12s cancel each other out. So 12 times five is 60 equals y, these 12s canceled. And remember, love that bell. I always wanna write my variable first when I finish my answer, so y equals 60. Number seven, negative one and one half h equals four. Uh-oh, what do I do? I've got a fraction, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. I know what to do. I'm gonna change this to a mixed number and then just uh, multiply my fractions, right? To get rid of a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. Well, to take the reciprocal of a fraction, I can't have a mixed number. So I'm gonna multiply negative one times the, actually, I'm gonna leave that negative out, one times the denominator, add it to the top, and whatever that is, I'm gonna stick a negative sign in front of it. So one and a half is the same thing as three halves, one times two, add two to the top, one plus two is three, three halves, and it's negative. So negative three over two times h equals four. And then to get rid of times anything, we have to divide by something, right? So if I'm getting rid of times negative three over two, I have to divide by negative three over two. Let me do this way. If I have negative three over two h equals four, and I wanna get rid of times negative three over two, I have to divide by negative three over two, right? And I have to do the same thing over here, divide by negative three over two. Well, that looks weird, right? It's a fraction in a fraction. But think about what we're saying. It's just a division problem, right? We're just saying negative three over two divided by negative three over two, right? The variable's gonna stay. These guys are gonna cancel each other out. So how do they cancel each other out? Well, remember, when I divide fractions, we kind of reviewed this a little bit earlier on, when I divide fractions, I use keep it, change it, flip it. So I'm gonna keep this the same, keep. I'm gonna change this to multiplication, and I'm gonna flip my second equation. Right? Keep it, change it, flip it. So I'm gonna keep negative three over two. I'm gonna change that division sign to a multiplication and I'm gonna flip this upside down so it's two over negative three. So instead of dividing now, now I'm multiplying. Negative three times two equals negative six. Two times negative three equals negative six. Negative six over negative six is just one. So up here, when I divide, by a fraction, it just becomes one, one h, right? I'm just left with h. Same thing with four divided by negative three over two. If I said four divided by negative three over two, I'm gonna change this to a fraction, so I just put it over one, keep it, change it, flip it. So I'm gonna keep four over one, change my sign to multiplication, flip this upside down, and multiply straight across. Four times two is eight. One times negative three is negative three. So I get negative eight over three, right? So H equals negative eight over three. So that's an improper fraction, right? So I can still change it back to a mixed number. 
how many times uh, can I put eight into three? Let's think of it this way. Put it on, put the little minus sign out here on holds. That just messes everything up when we're adding. Okay, so eight thirds is the same thing as three thirds plus three thirds plus two thirds, right? Three plus three plus two is eight. Yep, and they're all in thirds. And now, since I wrote it this way, I can change each of these to one. So this is saying one plus one plus two thirds. So it's really two and two thirds. So H equals negative two and two thirds. Don't forget that negative sign we left out front. Go back and watch that again if I went too fast. We can do more um, fractions reviews too. If you guys feel like you need more work on fractions, I, I will be happy to go over any of that with you. Sorry, that was a big old jumble mess. So negative two and two thirds for here. Uh, negative two and two thirds was our answer. All right, number 10. Negative three and a third times B equals five. Well, let's do another one. This is good practice. You will see fractions in this lesson on your homework, so you do need practice with it. All right, I'm gonna leave that negative sign out here to the front. I don't wanna deal with that right now because I'm gonna confuse myself. So it's three and one third B equals five. I wanna change this to a uh, improper fraction. So I multiply the front number times three and add it to the top. Three times three is nine. I'm gonna add nine up here, so I'm gonna get 10 over three. And I have to remember that negative sign, I'm putting it back in front, uh, B equals five. So now, to get rid of negative 10 over three, I divide by negative 10 over three, which is the same thing as just multiplying by three over negative 10, right? If I multiply by the reciprocal, they cancel each other out. That's what we just showed that last example. Since I multiply this side by negative three over 10, I have to multiply this side by negative three over 10. It doesn't matter where the negative sign is. It doesn't change the number answer that we get. Okay, so now these cancel each other out and I'm left with B equals Five is over one. Five times three is 15. One times 10 is 10, and there's a negative sign out front. And now I do know that I can simplify this. So what can I divide the top and the bottom by? Five. So 15 divided by five is three. 10 divided by five is two, and it's negative. So you can either leave it as B equals negative three over two, or you can rewrite that negative three over two, put the negative out front, leave it there for a second, and three over two is the same thing as two over two plus one over two. This is one whole, so one plus one half. So B equals negative, put that negative sign back, one and one half. I know I'm going fast, sorry. B equals negative one and one half. All right, number 13, no more fractions for right now. Number 13, I have to divide both sides here by, oh, sorry. I have to divide both sides of my equal sign by three, right? Right now it's H times three. To get rid of times three, I gotta divide by three. Same thing over here, I gotta divide by three. These threes cancel. H equals negative 42 divided by three equals negative what is it, 12? Negative 14. Negative 14. Okay, number 14. This is a good one because of the sign. All right, so remember your rules of integers. When you multiply or divide positive and negative numbers, if you're multiplying by the same thing, then the number stays positive. If both numbers are negative or both of them are positive, your answer is gonna be positive, whether you multiply or divide. If they are different, if you have a positive number and you multiply by a negative, or if you have a negative number and you divide by a positive, your answer is always gonna be negative. So same signs, positive, different signs, negative. That's all we're doing. So right now it's R times negative one third. This does not say R minus three. If this said R minus three, then I would add three right, and these would cancel. 
That is not what this is doing. This is not r minus three. Please do not add three to this. That is not what would get rid of that negative three. It's being multiplied, so to get rid of it, you have to divide. And since I divided negative three on the left, I have to divide by the same thing on the right. These threes cancel. I'm left with r equals negative divided by a negative is a positive, because they have the same sign. 24 divided by three is eight. So go over those signs. You wanna review those signs. If I need to do that with you, I will be happy to. That'd be a good thing to do for our Q&A on Thursday and Friday. Number 19. Now we're gonna end up with a fraction. We're almost done. Um, here, I have h being multiplied by 12. So to get rid of times 12, I divide by 12 and they cancel. And since I divided this side by 12, I have to divide this side by 12. So I'm left with h equals four divided by 12. And then can I simplify this fraction? Yeah, I can divide the top and the bottom by four and I get one third. So h equals one third and it's positive. Everything's positive, so the answer is positive. Okay, and then lastly, 22, um, I have five times n equal m equals negative 25. I wanna get m by itself. So to get rid of times five, I divide by five. Same thing over here, I have to divide by five on the left. These five cancel, so I bring down my m. Negative 25 divided by positive 25. If I could talk, negative 25 divided by positive five is negative five, right? And I wanna rewrite this with my m in front. All right, let me know if you have questions. I'll be happy to review that with you, and good luck on the assignment.